My name is Tom Wheeler and I'm going to do a breakdown and analysis of President Obama's uh, Nobel Peace Prize acceptance speech. I'm going to analyze the opening, the organization, and body of the speech and the closing. One of the big things about the speech that got my attention was the controversy that surrounded it prior to the speech. Um, the big reasons were Americans felt he was undeserving. The big reason that Americans felt he was undeserving was um, he's a wartime president and he were involved in two wars right now and he's escalating one of them. Actually right at the time of the speech he was in the process of escalating the war in Afghanistan. Um, he's up to this point in his political career has more aspirations than achievements. He just hasn't been around that long. He's a fir uh, first year president and he's basically just getting his feet wet. Um, he was able to neutralize a lot of the bad feelings um, about this by making a joke in front of the the audience when he in his opening, and he got a good laugh. Um, the fact that he acknowledges a kind of a lack of credibility by people for his appointment to the prize actually gives him some credibility. I think if you'd have looked at public opinion polls prior to his receiving the Nobel Prize, I think eight in ten Americans felt he didn't deserve it. After this speech, the numbers didn't change. That I think it was like seven in ten, but a lot more people were more accepting of the fact he did receive it. They weren't just so totally negative about it. It didn't change everybody's mind, but he did do a really good job. This speech turned things around for him. Um, it's pretty engaging the way he um, attack this. Um, another thing he talked about was uh, receiving the Peace Prize in our countries in two wars. And he attacked that head on and justified the war effort. And that it worked for him, I thought. You know, it gave him credibility. Um, now I'm going to move on to the body and organization of the speech. If I can get this to. The PowerPoint slides would not show up. That's why we're doing this. Uh, the main point of his speech was the war. Um, he talks about past, present, and future wars, and he compares them to where we find ourselves today in Iraq and Afghanistan. And in doing so, he pretty much explains exactly where we stand in those two wars today. Um, he states that he has no definitive solution to the problems of the war, and by looking in the past, he's looking to history for solutions to help, you know, help find a peace in Afghanistan and Iraq. Um, he, at this point in the speech, he, he is focusing his, on his key ideas. He's not putting so much information into the speech that the audience can't understand it with too many details. Um, he's trying to put forth, forth, I think, a balance for going to war opposed to building a more peaceful world. Um, he's just trying to justify the reasons we're involved in two wars right now. Um, knowing that everything is political, I think when he gave this speech, he was speaking more to the American public than the world at large, because he's having a lot of political problems here at home right now. Um, he goes on and talks about rules of the road, the legitimacy of intervention and justification for war, and he talks about a country's overly aggressive policies coming back to haunt them down the road. And in my mind, he was speaking about Iraq when he brought this up. Um, when we initially invaded Iraq, we were the aggressor. And a lot of the world made us pay for it as the years went by with lack of support. And this is a good example of him using the past, the present, and the future to make a point. Um, Going over it again, uh, President Obama is using the past, present, and the future. He's giving us a problem, the cause of the problem, and what his solution is. And he's saying hard work and persistence are going to be what gets us through these wars. And he's looking for a just peace. Uh, when Obama transcends from talking about waging war to building a peace, he focuses on three main ideas. 
The first is about nations that break the rules. I think he was speaking about Iran specifically, or indirectly, I guess. He goes on to talk about non-military means of getting them back in line to follow the rules of, of civilized society. And he feels sanctions and engagement are the answer. Uh, the second point he talks about the nature of peace itself. He emphasizes protection for human rights and talks about serving the world, America, in the world's best interests. I think at this point, though, he would sell out for a lot less than that for a peace accord in Afghanistan. Um, the third point he makes is a need for security and economic opportunity after the fighting stops in these countries. Um, again, he's talking about the problem, the cause, and what his solution to the problem is. As the president develops these points for the audience, um, he gives adequate um, but not excessive explanations, so he's not confusing everybody. He's pretty logical and he's easy to understand when he gives a speech. All right, now I'm going to move on to the closing, and that's, I guess, War and Peace. The conclusion to his speech went really smooth. Um, in the opening, he states, or in the opening of the speech, he states, we're still at war. He goes on to talk about the relationship between war and peace and how we're trying to replace one with the other. Um, in the closing, he states, we can understand that we will be at war. Um, so I think that kind of ties the opening and the closing together. And he goes on to say, but we can strive for peace even if it requires tough decisions. So he's saying he's willing to make the decisions. Um, I think the president would choose um, peace over conflict, but he's stating he's willing to do what's necessary to achieve peace, even if it requires him to make tough decisions. Um, I think this connects his opening and closing together. Um, as, as the speech goes on, you get the feeling that, that President Obama is kind of growing into the job as being president. Most of our first term presidents stumble a little bit, and he's done the same. They all do. And this speech gives me hope that he's, he's getting a good footing. He's, um, I like what he says. The president makes a good point, and this is probably the best point for me in the whole speech, that as the world grows smaller, you would think humans would begin to recognize our similarities in one another, with one another, and that's not the case. Um, we're, according to the speech, we're fearful of losing, people are fearful of losing their customs, their identities, their religious beliefs, things along those lines, and it's worse for some people than others. I think in some parts of the world, just a, a clip of MTV can be a real fearful thing. Um, I think President Obama, he brings the topic of religion into the speech at this point and he identifies the problem. Um, the problem is war, the cause, globalization, cultural changes, and fear of cultural changes. And these things lead to violence and religious violence. I think he does a good job of summarizing the points in his speech. Um, we understand there will be war, but we strive for peace. The president gives the audience uh, something to walk away with. It's a quote by Martin Luther King. I refuse to accept despair as the final response to the ambiguities of history. And that's my analysis of President Obama's speech. Thank you.